Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's Diego <laughs> with the beautiful Karina, my lovely Prometida. And we're waiting for our K-1 visa to get adjudicated at the service center in California. Our NOA-1 letter is dated April 18th, 2022. And uh, we're like you guys, we're in the same boat, waiting and waiting and waiting. But that's okay, it's a process. And uh, it's better to be waiting for your visa than having not submitted it. But you guys are getting ready to submit your visas. We know. Watch our videos and this will help you. This is your channel. Get through the process as painlessly as possible. Now, this video, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, is not just about K-1 visas. The U.S. State Department processes visas for all kinds of different uh, people and different reasons for entering the United States. Come on along, I'll give you an idea of just how busy these guys are, okay? Come on. Now, you gotta remember, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that the, that the U.S. State Department, they don't just issue K-1 visas, okay? The U.S. Department of State issues U.S. visas for anyone planning to enter the United States as a foreign national. Doesn't necessarily have to mean you're gonna be getting married. And, uh, you know, for people who are just joining this channel, who, this is your channel. I live in Pensacola, Florida, in the Panhandle, just north of yeah, Pensacola, east of Navarre Beach. And Karina is from Caracas, Venezuela. And Karina is my fiance, and we are gonna get married on Navarre Beach just as soon as we get our K-1 visa approved by those hardworking folks at USIS in California. Now let me explain to you just all about all the other visas, that immigration process, not just K-1, come on. Now COVID, when COVID hit, uh, that basically decimated the, uh, the global economy and put a block on pretty much every visa ever being processed, ever invented, okay? In, in, let's do a comparison, in 2017, now it's fiscal year 2017, the US State Department uh, processed 9.7 million uh, visas, immigrant and non-immigrant. Fiscal year 2017, they processed 9.7 million visas. Now let's jump forward to 2021, and in, two, in fiscal year 2021, uh, the Department of State only issued 2.8 million visas. So that's a massive reduction, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. But it was because they closed the consulates, they closed the embassies. Everybody was, you know, basically hiding under their desks with a face mask on so they didn't get COVID. And I can understand, you know. So the, the COVID pandemic put a massive damper on visa processing. And, and, that, and what that did was it created a massive backlog, a massive backlog of millions of visas. Well, I don't know about millions, but a lot, thousands of visas got into a backlog. And then now you guys and you and I are experiencing that extra wait time because they're playing catch up. So now if you're planning on coming to the United States, it's 2023. We want you to come to the United States. We want you to come visit and uh, explore this fantastic country. Okay. And you know, whether it's on an, a non-immigrant visa or an immigrant visa, but now I wanted to give you an understanding uh, of past approvals. Uh, and, and so help to help you understand the overall trends and prepare yourself accordingly for when you plan to apply for your visa. Okay. Now a visa refusal is also called a visa rejection uh, by many people. And uh, these terms are used interchangeably, which is fine. Now we don't want to see you get a, a visa. Re, re, uh, we don't want to see you get a refusal. Okay. Or a denial. We want to see you get an approval. Okay. And uh, so let's go ahead and talk about all the different kinds of visas that are available to you guys out there around the world who want to come to the USA. The first visa that's available is called the A1 visa, okay? An A1 visa is issued to diplomats and government officials, all right? Next up to bat, you have the A2 visa. And the A2 visa is issued to government officials and employees. Then we get into the B-1 visa, and the B-1 visa is a temporary visa for business meetings to negotiate conferences, to negotiate contracts, 
and to attend conferences okay then we come to the B, uh, B1 B2 visa which is a temporary visa for business and pleasure commonly known as a tourist visa okay and the B2 visa is a separate visa by itself also which is a, a visa used for pleasure for tourism medical treatment or other purposes so Mr. Beneficiary, Miss Beneficiary, if you want to come to the United States and visit with your sponsor before you guys get married on a vacation, you would apply for a B2 visa, okay? And the next up to bat is the BCC and B1, B2 visa, which are border crossing cards and, and uh, visitor visas, B, 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 C, C. Okay, whoa, man, I tell you, the State Department loved the letters, right? Next you have the BCV and B1, B2 visa, again is a border crossing visa, a visitor visa. And then next you have the C1 visa, which is a transit visa, alright. And then you have C1 slash D visa, which is a, a crew member and transit visa. A crew member I would assume would be, you know, a ship's crew member uh, in, in that realm. The State Department also issued issued D visas, which are for crew members, flights, flight members. You want you're a part of a ship's crew. You're a part of a flight crew on an airplane. Then you have the E1 visa, <laughs> E1 visa, a treaty trader visa. So if you want to come to the United States for trader trading, come on, get your E1 visa. Then you have the E3 visa and the E2 visa. Well, the E2 visa is a treaty investor visa. So if you want to invest in the United States as a, as a treaty member, you get a treaty investor visa. And then the E3 visa is the Australian in specialty occupation visa. So if you're from Australia and you have a specialty occupation, let's suppose you're a, a, a brilliant brain surgeon, then you would apply for an E3 visa. And then the E3D visa is for an E3 visa's dependent spouse or children. So that would be for the kids, the wife and kids of that brain surgeon that wants to come to the USA uh, from Australia with an E3 visa. An E3R visa is a returning E3 visa. So I guess that would mean if you had an E3 visa in the past, you can re get return on an E3R visa. Next up, you have an F1 visa, F1 visa is a student visa. So if you want to come to the United States and study at one of our wonderful universities, you would use an F1 visa. And then if you are married and you have any uh, dependents, uh, Mr. Student, on the F1 visa, you would get an F2 visa for your, for your dependents. And then you have the H1B visa, which is a temporary worker of distinguished merit and ability performing services other than as a registered nurse. Imagine that, they have a visa for a temporary worker performing services other than a registered nurse. Who knew? And then you have the H1B1 visa, which is the free trade agreement professional. Woohoo! The State Department also issued H2A visas. An H2A visa is a temporary worker performing agricultural services. So all those folks in Mexico or, or Canada who want to come to the United States to work in agriculture, you get yourself an H-2A visa, okay? And then there's the H-T, H-T, H-2B visa, which is a to temporary worker performing other services. So if you want to do something, come to the United States and work other than agricultural, you get an H-2B visa. And then the H-4 visa is for the spouse or child of the H-1B, B-1, C, H-2A, B, or H-3 visa holder. Woo! Man! And then there's the J-1 visa, which is an exchange visitor. A J-1 visa is an exchange visitor. So if you want to exchange an American for a person from, let's say, uh, Italy, Okay, for students, you'd get an exchange visitor visa. The J-2 visa is for a spouse or child of an exchange visitor on a J-1. And then we have, what comes after J? K! K-1 visas! Yes, indeed, a K-1 visa is a fiancé visa 
that is issued to a beneficiary of a U.S. citizen who wants to marry you. And you want to marry him or her, which is primarily what our channel is about. But this is just an overview of the other visas that immigration process. Okay. Then there's the K2 visa, which is the child of a K1 visa, which gets you know, a K2 visa is included uh, on USCIS form I-129F. Okay. So that's how you do that. Immigration also processes L1 visas, which is an intra-company transferee for an executive, a manager, or specialized personnel continuing, continuing their employment with an international firm or corporation. So let's say, for example, uh, you are from Ecuador and you work for AT&T, a big major company in the United States, you come into the United States on an L1 visa to work in the USA. Next up is the O1 visa and the L2 visa. Now the L2 visa is for the spouse or child of an intra-company transferee on the L1. And the O1 visa is for a person with extraordinary ability in sciences, art, education, business, or athletics. So if you are an Olympic runner and you want to come to the USA and run for a university, for a scholarship, for example, you get an O-1 visa. And the State Department also issues the O-2 visa, which is a person accompanying or assisting in the artistic or athletic performance person who is coming here under the O-1 visa. So the O-1 visa is for that champion runner, and the O-2 visa is for the person, I guess, that carries the bags for the champion runner. Who knows? And then the O3 visa is for the spouse or child of the O1 or O2 visa holder. Next, you have the P1 visa, which is an individual or, or team or entertainment group member. All right, so the, say if you play for a soccer team in Colombia and you want to come to the USA as an athlete, you'd get a P1 visa. And then the P2 visa is an, for an entertainer or artistic group or individual under an exchange program. And last but not least, immigration process and issue P3 visas, which is an entertainer or artist as a group or individual. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, if USCIS and the State Department approve and issue P1 visas for athletes, individuals, teams, entertainers, or group members. Okay, P1, P2, P3. And uh, that's it, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. So you can see that the State Department and the USCIS are very busy people and they do not issue visas just K-1s or CR-1s or IR-1s, no. They issue visas across the whole spectrum of uh, processing uh, foreigners who want to come into the United States. And we want to see you in the United States with your K-1 visa in your hand, ladies and gentlemen, and your K-2 visa. And we will see you very soon in the USA, no matter what visa it is you're going to use to come in and explore this fantastic, huge, beautiful country. Thanks for watching. I'll be back.